Well, this is an exciting day. I get to try a brand new brand of soft pastels. They're by Paul Rubin. Uh, the colors look great. And as you can see, I've already started to go over to create a um, an underpainting for the pastels. I chose, this is gonna be flat water, and I chose this little area to start experimenting with this color. First over here, I stroked it on and then used rubbing alcohol to um, blend it into the paper as a wash. And over here, I just simply rubbed it on, not trying to cover up everything, and used this um, window insulation foam that's it's fairly dense. It works so well with pastels. And then if I just rub across that, it rubs it in. And I believe that I like this way better than the wet application. Over here, there's still, you can see through the pastel into the color of the paper. And this is more opaque. Um, so that's the way I'm gonna use it rather than the alcohol wash. And get my underpainting in and then see how the layering goes. Already I could see I had this turquoisey color right here and went over it with this one. Blended it in. It layers beautifully. And you really can't see the turquoise very well. I'm going to, this part that is washed in with alcohol, I'm going to go over it right now to see what happens. And that's a better look. The Paul Rubens Soft Pastels uh, asked if I would like to do a review of their pastels. And they have provided a large set of pastels. Uh, so this is a review of uh, the pastels how they apply, what techniques I can use with them, and what's their overall impression to me. So far, it's been excellent. I'm working on an underpainting for this seascape. I have taken little samples of the um, sticks and to see where I wanted to use what color. This is going to be the primary focus of the painting where the water is folding back over. So it's a very light, light green. My reference photo, however, is from the Texas Gulf Coast, Matagorda Beach. And the water here is very gray, very, um, almost an even color, uh, if gray is a color in this case. Um, so it lets me imagine the colors I want to use on here. Um, a lot of freedom in color selection. And that's why, I, since I don't have any colors to use from the reference photo, I have made these little color spots to see what colors I want to use in different areas. Um, this is going to be the darkest, the next darkest, and they continue with this being the lightest color. So um, let's get started. To continue with my underpainting of a seascape, I have used uh, my no tan um, thumbnail, which is in proportion to the painting surface, 12 by 24. And um, 
I'm working from a reference photo I took at Matagorda Beach. It's, there's no detail in it. Uh, it's, it's from um, an, a newer iPad where I zoomed in and zooming in on the iPad um, pixelates everything that you're looking at. So even though this is what I want, I, I have to imagine and remember a lot of the feeling on that day. So stick had sharp ends on it. It wasn't level all the way across. So I used my homemade um, sharpener and just laid it on this rough surface to smooth out an area that I can use as a flat area. This is kind of a little key area too. Um, because it's a secondary wave in front of this one. So I want to show that and keep it And I'm going to use um, in combination, I'm going to use some of this green rather than keeping it all. And interestingly, this goes on a lot smoother than this blue in, in feel. And this water right here, because it will be flat, it's reflecting um, some of the sky colors. So I want to go back to, to the blue rather than that green. It looks almost neutral, but it's a pretty color. And it's, it's um, sliding very easily. This is going to be flat water again, reflecting some of the sky. Um, all that has, a, it'll have a little bit of white or light color um, over it. And the same thing with, uh, with this one, a nice large area. I tried blue, but I felt like I needed something that was more neutral. Um, purple, that is, it's also going to be the flat water reflecting the sky, but I'm going, uh, and first with this purple, because most of this will be covered by sea foam that is coming and going. Um, so a lighter color will be put over this, but um, I need to give it a, a little bit of background underneath it. It's kind of like it's in the shade because, of course, it covered by the foam, it would be. Okay. When I get all of these colors in, I'm going to blend them with a, a really special, very, very helpful tool. A lot easier than using the hand. All of these colors are approximated right now because there will be layers on top of them. As this water hits the top, starts over, this will be the lightest spot. As it starts over, it's a lot lighter than what's underneath it because um, what's underneath it goes way back in a very thick wave. And so it's not getting any light. And uh, because of that, you want it to be darker, as well as it gives a beautiful contrast to the foam that's coming over. Okay, and a little bit over on this side, just up close to the, what's coming over. You'll have this dark color here against the light, light, lightest part of it, and it makes that stand out so much more.
Okay, I don't need a whole lot over there because I don't want you going off the page. It's really just a uh, kind of, it, it's too far. It has many purposes. It's um, covering the paper, that's number one. And secondly, it um, is creating a value of the painting and um, in this case it's using local colors um, that and that what that means is that it's the actual colors that you might see in the ocean rather than uh, an, another way to use pastel is to use the underpainting as an opposite color if it's going to be green in the final stage you might use a an orange or a reddish color as your underpainting. For me, the way I visualize, the way I see as I'm painting is usually to go with the local colors. That works best for me. So this is, a, the paper is UART 400 mounted on um, a foam core. And these pastels by Paul Rubin <clears throat> are going on deliciously smooth. And I like the colors. Love the colors. But they're going on so well. And this is the kind of fun part. Um, uh, you can get a little bit better idea of how well your underpainting looks. And here goes. I am using a compressed foam. It's very dense. So it doesn't it doesn't give very much when you press it in. Um, it, it's used for uh, insulating around cracks or windows where you might have a draft coming in. This is available at the hardware stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that. And you get it in, in long lengths and then cut it with the scissors to whatever size you need. Um, and I use different sizes. So I'm going to start with my lightest color, which is up here. And try not to mix my colors together. You can see, even though I didn't have anything here, as I bring this down, it gets a little bit into it. And for right now, I have to kind of be careful not to, um, I have a cloth here, it's one of the microfiber cloths. And if I have some color on there that I don't want, but I can keep using this. I just wipe it off a little bit. Rub in like this versus an alcohol or water wash. Um, I kind of like it better in, in most things because not having the wet paper, I don't ever have to worry about is it going to buckle or stay flat. And it's, it's very quick. I can do some adjustments if I want to. The underpainting, the, the purpose of it is just to get some value, cover up the paper. Just um, the value. Uh, you see, there is no color here. And if I go up like that, it doesn't really... It already gives little striations which gives the impression of water splashing. 
because the water is moving, there'll be no hard lines like you see right now. In the final painting but to eliminate some of it right now i can just use the edge of uh, this foam and come like that and this becomes this very soft and muted The important thing in the seascape to me is to remind yourself what direction is the water moving? How is that energy going? Um, and as you're putting pastel on, uh, keep that thought in your mind all of the time. So as I'm doing this, I know that this part of the painting, this water right at the surface area is falling down but in here it's going it's being sucked out to make that wave and let it come back up so rather than going in this direction against the movement of the water i'm already thinking to go in this direction or up it doesn't matter <clears throat> because all of the subsequent strokes of pastel are going to cover up. Hmm. The no tan, the one on the bottom. Okay, that's it for brushing in the underpainting. Uh, some of these colors will definitely change as I add layers to it. Um, always remember that because the water is moving, there's nothing flat on it. It is picking up and reflecting um, different colors, different values, depending on where in the spectrum of light, the sunlight is falling on, um, as well as it has a color of its own uh, in this case everything being gray or let's call it black and white um you still have to decide on what's the underlying color of all the water what's the color of the sky they influence each other and um when you do that and work those values and the movement of the water you got it made one thing I do want to know and to remind you, painting is individual. Your own choices, your style of painting, your techniques, your color choices, everything, it's, it's you. You're the boss. It doesn't have to match whatever it is that you're looking at. And the other thing is that because I did an underpainting here, doesn't mean that you have to. Many times I do not do an underpainting in my um, portrait work, figurative work. I do not use an underpainting. I just go with the local colors as I see them and then keep adding layers on top of it for the most part. Um, but because this seascape is, is a larger painting, it's 12 by 24, that's a lot of paper to cover. So for me, in this case, it was very much easier to um, cover the whole paper and see what values I've chosen and, and are they working, and then go on top of that with the layers as I choose. A lot of my paintings, you know, they'll have 15, 20, 25 layers of, of pastel on them. Um, this Paul Rubens soft pastels went on beautifully. Um, they glide across the paper, uh, they're smooth, and the coverage is very good. So they work so well for this underpainting. Now we'll start with the layering next, and um, hopefully it begins to look a little bit more like a seascape instead of an abstract <clears throat> conglomeration of color um, 
But again, the choice of an underpainting is yours entirely. You're the boss, you do what you want with it. This color, this is the uh, underpainting color and I put this on top of it to get that dark. And <laughs> surprisingly, it looks quite beautiful and most important, and most importantly, it looks believable as the color coming down into a wave that's way in the distance. I'm not, because this is my first time to use these pastels, I'm not familiar with what the colors actually look like. So I'm having to do a lot of um, pick and choose and that means this part of the video will go slower because I look down at the palette and decide which color might work, give it a little test shot, and if it does, I can continue with that. <clears throat> this little patch of... Uh, flat water. Oh, from a distance that works so nicely. Let it fall up into here a little bit. And that stays there. I've actually let this become darker than up here, opposite to my original plan, but I actually like that. Just kind of glance away for a minute and come back to this one we have the orange underneath this uh, aqua color there are all of these little great shapes of negative space and even though things are not right yet I have every confidence in this painting and in this wave now because I can, because you can see through that wave, this color back there, warm color, cooler color on top.
So one of the, even though this is not accurate yet, um, it informs what I'm going to do over here on the main part. That's one good plus. Other thing, I want to, this is a fan brush that has little teeth that were manufactured into it. It's a wonderful tool. And if I just lightly touch some of this light color, you can see some of it is falling down. but it thins out that part of the foamy wave and makes it more translucent, um, airy. So it's one of my favorite tools. Again, it's not about trying to match the reference photo. But about if it, thinking about the the memory of that time and place, the, because this is only the second layer of the pastels, the soft pastels. There's still enough of the sanded texture. Uh, it's it's um, hills and valleys that it's still grabbing the pastel and more as opposed to later when you stroke the pastel across and it, it's much smoother. So you're getting more in, in the second layer, you get more, um, more color from a stick as you're stroking it than you will later when the when the surface is a bit smoother. But I love how using this tool and, and the fan brush and my f other favorite tool is the skewer, um, how you accidentally create negative spaces of overlapping colors and it brings up the magic of the movement of water.
becomes like a, having a paintbrush in your hand. Uh, for those who paint with oil or acrylic, something else that uses a brush where they can blend colors together with a brush. Um, this kind of works that way. Um, here's something I didn't plan, and I feel like you just have to let the painting follow its own direction. Where does it want to go? I started out with the idea of doing blues and aquas, but now it's changing to, to purples and greens with the cooler aqua out in the background and beyond the first wave and that wasn't intentional but i find it's working and i like it these are the two sets of paul rubens pastel soft pastels that i'm using um i've got a good picture of them the ones that are turned up are the ones I have been using. The smaller set is um, their portrait set. Although I'm using a number of those as well for the seascape painting. I love the way they're going on and the way they're layering. The colors are beautiful next to each other.
Hi, I'm Carolyn Hancock. I have been painting this seascape with a brand of pastels that is new to me. It is Paul Rubens Soft Pastels, and it's been a delight to use them. The array of colors has enabled me to do this entire seascape with ocean colors, water colors that work very well together. And in this painting, I have not used any pastel other than the Paul Rubens, with the exception of, of one that uh, is a different brand, and I needed it for its very heavy textured look um, that I use on the foam that's at the very top on the top layers of the pastel. Um, the Paul Rubens layered very well. I started out the painting with a dry underpainting. That is, I put the pastel on and then rubbed it into the paper with a piece of foam. And it took beautifully, it got, covers great. And um, then as I started applying the pastels, um, I found that I could put layer after layer after layer on top of this York paper. This painting is 12 by 24. I wanted this test of the Paul Rubens pastels to be on a larger surface so that I'd have more um, opportunity to use the pastels and different techniques. Um, one thing that I found is that if I am using a side stroke of a color, any color, over another color, that the, the color, the, the hue of it is less saturated. It's a little bit softer, um, maybe a sort of dull, but if I turn the pastel and I apply it with the edges, it's a completely different pastel. It puts the saturated color onto the surface, as I've done right here, as opposed to just a side stroke. So two different ways of using the Paul Rubens and each of them work beautifully. And this pastel has probably got 12, 15 different layers on it. Color on top of a different color on another color. Colors beside each other. I'm trying to see which way. How does this pastel work? How does this brand work? And um, this, for instance, this very light blue that I've put up into the sky. It's just beautiful. And the choices are to let, to to stroke across in a very light hand. That is, you're not pushing into the paper very much. It's almost like a feather stroke. As opposed to one where you push into and you use a hard um, pressure onto the paper. So you get different effects in that way, and they, they work beautifully that way. Um, scattered strokes, as I've done in here, to indicate rougher water, that works very well. If I had this darker, very neutral green underneath it, so gray green, and then I put this on top, it gave me the effect without any effort of um, troubled water, of uh, water that has a lot of movement in it, which goes with the wave. I have not finished this painting. There's still work that I want to do on it. Um, but just to give you a, a, a quick review of the Paul Rubens, uh, they're reasonably priced, very reasonable. And um, the, the color range is great. If I can pick this box up without spilling them, because I don't want them to shatter. Um, it's a beautiful range of colors. 
You can see that I have not used the yellows um, in this painting and not too much of the uh, warmer reds and pinks and oranges. Um, oddly enough, I find I don't use yellow in very many paintings, very many places at all. So these, I'm not sure how, how often I will use those, but all of these colors on this half, as well as the, that's, that is a 72 piece set, as well as this is a portrait set. Uh, and the colors are um, a little bit more muted, neutral, um, very deep colors. So for a portrait, I would probably have to combine both sets. Um, I haven't done a portrait with them yet, so I'm not sure about that. But I highly recommend this. Um, uh, if you're just getting started, they're a wonderful set to start with. Uh, this is a sanded paper, um, works beautifully on them. Great coverage, great layering, and excellent mark making.